Hi, I'm Bruce and just over a year ago we began our homesteading journey. This week I have the privilege of local apple tree expert Tom Barry teaching us various tree grafting techniques. Jeez, this is better than the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> now this is a skine. We begin reclaiming some grazing with the pigs. And me and Betsy get working on the electric go-kart build. If you're new here, why not click the subscribe button and become part of our ever-growing community. Hey guys, welcome back to this week's vlog. Um, today I'm heading over to Tom Barry's place. Those of you that have followed me for a while will know him. Uh, wealth of knowledge, he's going to be teaching us how to graft apple trees. And I'm really excited about this one because he has some varieties of apples that I absolutely love. So he can show us, we can get some skines from him and hopefully get some keepers in our orchard. The snow is melting and it's leaving us in a terrible state. Um, but hey, you can't complain about it, can you? Because what does that actually do to help? Anyway, I better go because otherwise I'm going to be late. This is the man you want, not us. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice to have an audience. Yeah, it's yeah, nice to see that he's not yeah. just talking to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I get my own dedicated <laughs> session with Tom. <laughs> Okay? Yeah. Um, what we've got here, folks, is a tree that's been top grafted. Okay? So if you have an old apple tree that's not producing anything, or a crab tree, you can, you can top graft it. And it's the easiest graft of all to do. I got this tree from my sister-in-law. She was throwing it out. It was no use. Um, absolutely, absolutely hopeless. So what I did was I did rind grafts. You see, that's the first one. I'd say that's maybe four or five years going. And you can see how it's healed. Okay? So that's one variety. Here are two different varieties in this one. Two more there. Um, two more here. So there's about, I'd say, six different varieties of apples on that. So what we're going to do today, I think we might move off this one because I'm not sure of what this is. I think it is a graft. Um, I made the mistake of letting the ponies and the donkey in here. The ponies won't touch them, but the donkey, you know, if there's any, any criminality to be committed, he'd do it. <laughs> Cliff grafting is it's very intrusive. Um, you, when you cut a big branch, you can split it with the axe and put a chisel in there and put your skines there and there and let it back in and bind it up. I think that the rind graft is a lot, lot easier. So Jack Russell doesn't take prisoners. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a piece of wrapped around. Now this is a skine. It's, it grew last summer. Last summer's growth and it's hardened up. What I do I always take the skines around Christmas oh, yeah. and I stick them by the tree yeah. because I want to have the skine really more. You see here it's already started, the sap beginning to come. There's nothing here so this will be dying for sap oh, yeah. uh, mm. and it has a much better chance of actually taking it. Okay, now if you move in here I'll show you what's really important about about this. You wanted to hold up here. Good man. I've got to get my glasses now because you have the bark, okay? And inside the bark you have what's called cadmium layer. That's where all the action is, that's where all the nutrients come. So I'm going to open a flap here. Now I'm going very carefully. Open that up, and you've got to do it very slowly, very carefully. I look for maybe two buds, okay? I look for two buds, three buds maybe. And there's a bud there right at the end where I'm going to work with. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to trim it, trim it off round here. Wait, you messed it up. Now you see again. The cadmium layer is there. So the trick is to get it in here so that they fuse. 
they fuse together. Mm. It's a much bigger job sealing with wax. Now, I have grafting wax and I used to use it. This works perfectly. You make sure this is nice and tight. Nice and tight. Just keeping air out as well. Mm. Yeah. Air out as well and yeah. especially water. Mm. You'd be too bad a nurse either, Tom Barry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would be the world's worst a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> this is rootstock. I dug that up this morning. Okay, it's been there since last year. Um, and what we're going to do, we're going to, if I let that grow, you'll get crabs. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to graft on Charles Ross onto here. The ideal thing here is to get the same thickness. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's really important. If you can get that, it's very, very easy. It's very easy to do. Um, I like to have, to keep the graft, I prefer to go here. Now, okay, there's my sky. Oh. Like a glove. <laughs> You've done this before, Tom. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> this, don't, don't <laughs> show too soon. Now, because I'm not a very good carpenter, I'm not a carpenter at all. <laughs> <laughs> the old guys, nurserymen that I knew in, in, in UK, they do this with a grafting knife. They go, in. and I'm not good at that. So I cheated a little bit. I bought myself this, this grafting gun. Oh, here's my assistant. David, <laughs> don't name the dogs. At least you didn't good afternoon, Bruce Simes prescribers. Welcome! <laughs> <laughs> the pair of glasses has gone missing. That's David so calls this senior moments. <laughs> <laughs> you already had one of them today. I did call and them all before the day's out. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is, is a terrific, terrific tool. Okay? In that the idea is what well, is known as male and female. Okay, I want with the female here and the male here. Is that just a wedge that got taken out, or did it just cut straight? Out? Yeah, there's a wedge taken out. Wedge. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jeez, this is better than the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> All I have to do now is find it. V, so you cadmium layers are lined. The cadmium layer on this and the cadmium layer on the stock right. is a line. And can I ask for the rootstock? Did you so would you cultivate them <laughs> yourself, or do you t or do they grow like around the tree? Or well, what's there the story? One way, a very easy way for you to guys to get rootstock is to take an apple pip, put it in a tray, yeah, and let it grow. Job done. And you have, and after two years, you have this. What do we do? It's not rocket science, okay. folks. If you get the cadmium layers lined up, you got it. Because um, it's like any gardening. You know, the old gardener said to me once, he said, the seed wants to grow. I won't leave that now in the tunnel. I'll leave that out at the other... You see where the snow is? Yeah. So that the, the water is always coming off the tunnel. Because in June, with two weeks, Two weeks of no rain, mm. pots dry out, mm. and give an awful shock to the tree or to the plant. Yeah. And I, I, it's strange to say that in, in Ireland, I fear drought. Mm. Drought is, 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 is bad, you know. Um, but that's it. I thought we were cherry blossom when I saw it. Isn't it beautiful, lads? A peach off that tree, lads, is, is, is just wonderful. Right then guys, we're all done over at Tom's. I hope you got as much out of that as I did. Uh, he's such a wealth of knowledge and such a lovely person to be around. Anyway, I am having to pop to the shops now to get a few bits, so it's fairly boring. Fairly boring? Fairly boring. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>
Right, there we go, we're all set up now. Um, the good old pigs have done their work in this bit. We're going to be growing vegetables and piling up our manure, getting it under plastic cover. But since the snow's melted, it's just turned into a mud bath, so they are going to be delighted to be put in to a nice new field. Sam, new place. They always get a little bit worried about getting to a new place. Come on, yeah, can I touch Right, there they are in their new bit of ground. We're just now going to go up and get their house and roll it down the hill and give it a little clean out. Treasure. Spotting our new neighbours. <laughs> Wiggle that side to side. <laughs> I'm gonna try that. Right, I love it when the pigs are on a nice fresh bit of ground. Dry, so their feet are nice and dry. Funnily enough, because it's dry. Happy as a pig in dry ground. And uh, we just need to give them some fresh bedding in their house and bring their water down, and then we're gonna go and have some food. So I'll see you guys after lunch. Right, now we are back out by the polytunnel and we are carrying on where the pigs left off and they've done a great job of getting pretty much everything up just a few little bits a couple of bits they've missed we need to get up and then what we're going to do is take all this horse manure and bring it over here where we're going to have our outdoor beds eventually and then i've got some builder's plastic and we're going to cover it up and weight it down and then uh patiently wait i guess really a minimum of a year and then when we come back, hopefully weed free, lots of nutrients in the ground, ready for us to begin our outdoor growing journey. So whilst me and Annie are out in the mud, digging up all those old roots and getting up the stones, uh, Betsy's in the polytunnel right now, thinning out the carrots, which she loves to do. Sam, I just got the ones that are touching each other and look really good. So the camera ran out of batteries whilst we were doing that and it was absolutely lashing it with rain so I thought I'll just leave the camera for now 
and me and Annie are both absolutely shattered. The wood shed is full of split logs now, so that feels good. And Annie has been digging away like a little mole. And uh, she looks a bit like a mole. Look how muddy she is. I think I need to be That's hosed down. <laughs> is it you mine? have been on that tough mudder. I feel like I have. That's a lovely Burton snowboarding jacket that Anne's decided to wreck. It's never seen the mountains. Look at that. Grub. Now I've got to do the dishes and make the dinner. Oh yeah, that didn't sound like the brain. And now I'm going to go into the shed with Betsy and do an hour on the go-kart. I'll show you where we got to. Right, there were some people that wanted to see where we got with the go-kart build, so if you cast your memory back, the seat used to be like way over here, and the steering was like up here. So we've cut that down, we've just bent this forward, we've moved, we've made it so that the seat currently is adjustable, so it can slide backwards and forwards, because well one, we're not 100% sure where Betsy's uh, best position is going to be, and also we might make it so that if you've got something bigger, like me maybe, wants to have a go, then we can slide it back. So, at the moment, the steering's not connected, so we just need to, well, have a little bit of a think about how we're going to do this, but I think we know we're going to have a go, and if it doesn't work out, I've got a few other tricks up my sleeve open. So, here's the motor. It's a 24 volt. They said 250 watt from Vivor. So, we'll see. Now, I'm not sure how fast or not fast it's going to go. We'll have to play with some gear ratios when we get going, but yeah, hopefully it should be good. Yeah. So now we drill there, see? Perfect job on that. You can have it. I know, but you know, like if you get the drill with that, you find where the hole is. See how that's like not going to move in it. And if you didn't do that, when you come to drill, sometimes the drill can like start squirreling off to the side. And you're like, oi! Yeah. Stay where you are. Right, Betsy's a happy bunny anyway. 
got the steering sorted out. All that's left to do on that is uh, we've got a, a, a push bike from the scrapyard and I'm going to put a set of kind of flat handlebars that's going to be more like a quad bike, mainly because it has a, a twist throttle uh, with that motor. So next time, hopefully, we'll be putting on batteries and motor and it might actually start moving around, which will be pretty cool. Anyway, Annie has got the dinner ready, so I'm going to go in and get some food on my camera. I can see already is steaming up from this wet, wet weather. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. This morning, it is my and Annie's wedding anniversary. 11 years married, 14 years together. You get less for murder. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm also, you wouldn't get less for murder. We're not there yet. Because that can be arranged. Oh, come on. You wouldn't do that to me now. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to take you with me because that would be weird, I think. But I thought I'd tell you what I got her. So when we first got together, um, we both loved Raren Tree's wine fruit gums. But we always loved the green ones. So I custom made my own packet after buying about 10 packets and inside here. It's all green ones. <laughs> the kids help me by eating all of the leftover others. So anyway, I can't tell you the other bit that we're doing, so I'll tell you that tomorrow because uh, Annie doesn't know. You didn't say what I got you. I got Bruce this book that was recommended from his friend. Russ Mitchell. Right, as you were. Oh yeah, I can't tell you the next bit because um, Annie doesn't know what it is. So I'll tell you about it tomorrow. So I'll see you then. Bye. And if you want to see what I... Gave Annie a couple of years ago. I wrote her a song, and you can see that by clicking here or here. I don't know. I've not normally do things. I don't normally do things like that. Hey guys, so didn't film anything whilst we were out. It was really busy. It's the night before St. Patrick's Day. Uh, music was great, lovely people out and about. But uh, we're childless for a little bit more today because uh, our friend's been babysitting the kids. So today, me and Annie are just going to get in the polytunnel. We're going to mound up uh, these potatoes. I think Annie's trying to sort some seedlings out. And then I'm going to don my mask and goggles and go up into the loft and spray those timbers. And then we're going to pick up the kids and head off to Ennistamin for the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Woohoo! What are you doing? Anyone would think it was your bloody day after your anniversary or something? This is my anniversary present from you last year, so I'm just giving it some love. Fair enough. I need to get the wheelbarrow around you though. I don't normally boots in the get... way. <laughs> and you're in the way. You don't normally get the chance as the kids are normally sending it on loop the loop. Yeah, to be fair, they do want to swing on it. It has a lot of weed in today. Like a hell of a lot of weed in today. Yeah. Yeah, because... Well, that's why you're supposed to use it, uh, leave it for so long, I think. The fruit bushes, I might put them at the front there. Yeah. Mm. Hey, well. when, when's the harvest time, I think? It's been 12 weeks, isn't it? Yeah. Right, time to go and pick up the kiddiewinks. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Let's go to the parade. Woohoo! Woohoo! Got my green. Well done. Got my green, and have you got your green? Yeah, on? I've got my classic green hat on, mate. I've been you St. Patrick's been Day ready for a long time. <laughs> Those two are the
And my heart, it broke till I swear It died, but we stuck with each other With all our mind, we pulled it together And hail real tight and I'm glad for us I'm glad, McCree, but it's nothing to anyone except you and me And there were wrongs for all our friends there's ups and there's downs But you're the one for all my life My true love I found Yeah, you my love I found Well that's the end of a pretty awesome week Singing, dancing, learning, go-kart building If you've made it this far then definitely hit that thumbs up and if you're new here, click that old subscribe button. And of course, a huge, massive thanks to my patrons. I'll see you all next week. <laughs>